Now we gotta tackle this pipeline pull head. So let's get after it. There ain't no time to waste. Let's go. With the sun scorching hot like this, I gotta get some shade. Time to make some welds, guys. Now that we've uh, got the shade up, it's time to start the project. So let me show you some of the tools and things I am gonna need to assess this project. And that's gonna be the pool head that we we're gonna weld to this cap. Of course, I'm gonna need all the right welding tools, welding rods. High-low means that the cap would be either higher or lower than the pipe. What you wanna do is you wanna make them even to each other all the way around. Once you get your first tack on, you gotta break it loose and remove it. Don't need that no more. It looks good. So at this point now, I'll go ahead and uh, put a little tack here and then I'll run the other side because I don't want it to pull. If I run this whole side, it might pull this way more. Day. That's why we did the 718 welds on that. I would make it this far, they hate it, they never believe me. Yeah, I would never drop the ball, I know I make it look easy. Yeah, with the defense. What's good, my people? How are you doing today? Check it out, guys. I'm gonna dress this thing out, and as soon as I do, you're not gonna wanna miss the episode, so be sure to subscribe. But now we gotta tackle this pipeline pull head. So let's get after it. There ain't no time to waste. Let's go. Well, I can't weld in this. Well, that's more like it. Let's get going. Well, with the sun scorching hot like this, I gotta get some shade because this color does not repel the sun. It attracts the heat. So one thing I really like to use is my umbrella. And there's a certain way to set this umbrella up so you don't hurt yourself. So go ahead and unwrap it, keep it propped up, pull it out, push it up, bam, let's set her up. That's gonna keep me shaded. That's gonna keep me from overheating. It's time to make some welds, guys. Now that we've uh, got the shade up, it's time to start the project. So let me show you some of the tools and things I am gonna need to assess this project. Come on. So some of the things that uh, we're gonna need is definitely a head to put on the end of the pipe. That's called, uh, you know, a cap. And that's gonna be the pool head that we we're gonna weld to this cap, all right? So some of the things I'm gonna need to actually do this project is I like to have my little clamp to help set this on there. Of course, I gotta have my power, my negativity, <laughs> my negative for the back, and then my positive for the front. And of course, we're gonna grab some power to run my grinders. Now, I don't run my grinders with a guard on it, so if you're running guards on your grind, or if you're running grinders, please run the guards on them. Of course, I'm gonna need all the right welding tools, welding rods, you know, clamps, hammers, and of course wedges to make this work properly. So let's go ahead and just grab some of these tools and get after it. One of the things I like to do is fire up that welder. Can't leave it in TIG mode. You gotta put it in downhill, downhill stick mode. You make sure that it's always organized too. This is a very custom clamp, Javelin. This is how I run my ground. This is so I can roll the pipe. A lot of times when people go to hook this up, they just hook their ground like that. Well, once it gets a rolling, it falls right off. But if you take it and flip it up and slide it like that, that's the proper way. So when it rolls, it can't go over the hump. Bada bing, bada boom. That's what you want. All right, so at this point now, it's time to put on the pool head. Now the pool head I'm building. We have to turn on the new remote. In order to turn it on, you need to hold the power down let go, your red light will come on, hold it again until your blue light's activated. That will make the remote not turn off. 
Now I gotta set the remote to the heat setting of the machine. I have to make sure it's accurate. I have to max this remote out to 100 here because that'll give me the full capacity here at 250. So that way I, now I know by what numbers are here is what my heat is there. It's a lot to know. Now I run a real hot heat. It's gonna be 55 on remote. It's gonna be 137 amps on the machine. It's hot, baby. A lot of people tell you to run this beat about 110, 90 degrees. Well, I'm just cut from a different cloth, I guess. And this is the way I was taught, you know? And so I don't try to drift and differ from the ways I've been taught. Now this universal clamp, ultra clamp, whatever you want to call it, get it tight, loosen it, roll it down like that to make your fit. Get it nice and tight. Make sure your wing nuts are backed off just a little bit. Pick up your pull head and get your fit. Real important to make sure that you have a good fit, that there's no high-low in it. High-low means that the cap would be either higher or lower than the pipe. And what you want to do is you want to make them even to each other all the way around. So that way you can get a good even uh, weld on the inside. Oops, sorry about that. So I like a real tight gap, something like that. It run, runs really hot, real tight for me. The very first rod I put in this pipe is a 6010, guys. Got to get the chain vise on there. That's definitely going to help me roll the pipe. See? But when you set it up, set it up to where it helps you and not handicaps you. You put it into your gut, it's not going to work out. That's your first weld or your first tack. Once you get your first tack on, you gotta break it loose and remove it. Don't need that no more. Rotate it to the back. You'll probably have to open it up to get your gap. I know I do. Now, once you establish that is when you grind your starts. A lot of the time you got to throw a wedge in it to get the gap the same on each side. So that's what I'm doing right now. That way the gap is the same on each side when you weld it. So it takes a couple 6010 rods to get around this. So I always load a couple up in my pocket so I'm prepared so I don't got to reach back for that. All right, this is where all the fun is, right here. At this time now, I'll go ahead and knock out my, my wedge because it's going to hold it now. So now it's tying into the tack. Like that's it, I just grind it just a little bit. Another name of the game is, is it your birthday? Blow your candle out. Because when you pick that rod up, it's always got a little flame on it. 
So this is still my second pass. I just have to finish going all the way around with the second pass. It's gonna take me a couple more, two more rods at least, but I like to have to grind, I have to grind the start always right here. That's it. So what you, ha I don't always do this, but it's good to show it. A lot of the time I just burn right into this, bro. And that's, that's all its own training and teaching. Uh, still on my second pass, hot filler. Let's go. So that's the second pass for the hot fill. Now this is what you call flush to the top of the surface. I basically fill it all the way up to where it's just as high as the rest of the pipe in the fitting. Now I don't change my heat for this. I'm still at 188 uh, amps. It's hot, but uh, it's not gonna take me as long to get around the pipe now because I'm not filling it. I'm just gonna cap it. So it's gonna be just a, a quick pass and then get off it. I don't have to sit there and cram it in her. Huh. Well, there's no problem if you had a All right, now it's time to cap. One thing I'll do is I'm gonna wire wheel this start right here. Never fails. You always end up one inch from tying in on your third rod. So then you can do it with both hands now. You can always weld better with both arms. <laughs> Bam. All right, I'll be wire wheeling it next. So the next thing I need to do is attach my pull head. And in order to do that, I gotta remove all the paint. So that's just a quick trace to buff off all that paint real quick. All right, let me buff it off.
to make sure she looks, I mean, I set it on there pretty straight, I feel like. It looks good. So at this point now, I'll go ahead and uh, put a little tack here and then I'll run the other side because I don't want it to pull. If I run this whole side, it might pull this way more. So I'll run that first pass like that and now I'll run this whole side. Her over, continue welding this side. So this pull head has got to be able to pull a lot of weight. So that one little weld is not gonna cut it, guys. So what I need to do now is I need to build the weld up onto the plate and I need to make it at least as thick as the plate. That's kind of what you wanna do when you're welding stuff like this. Uh, and as well too is uh, people will fight and argue of which rod is strong enough to hold it. Most of the time I will MIG weld this with a high intensity co uh, metal core strengthening uh, wire. But today we are just gonna uh, a uh, 70 10 it, and now I'm gonna actually run 70 18 over it at this point. So I'm gonna buff this off and I'm gonna grab a new rod and we're gonna weld the new rod on. So I'll wire wheel this. All right, so now that I've already addressed my first pass with the 7010, I'm gonna go ahead and build the integrity up with some 7018, 3 16 low hydrogen rod. To me, this rod can basically withstand a lot of pressure, a lot of, uh, it's got a lot of tensile strength. So in order to pull this whole line, I want this rod to really hold my pipe. Yeah, this rod's hot. It's a hot rod. All day, that rod is super hot. So with this rod, you always gotta kinda break away the flux or buff it off, cause it gets in your way. Please wear a face mask when chipping the slag, guys. So the next part now that I've got this built up, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting my passes down flat right here across this. So I don't want my pipe turning. So I'm gonna get another jack, I think, and just set it underneath it so it quits spinning on me. There we go. That'll allow me to make a flat weld the best weld. Okay, are you ready for this? So I'll, what I'll do now is I'll put a pass above it, but I like, I like to wire wheel it so that way it's clean material when I weld and not slag in my way. All right, I'll 
wire wheel it real quick. We good? Third pass. For what? For undercut. <laughs> Cause you don't want to undercut it. Oh yeah, nice weld. And when I mean undercut, it was cutting the top of the material up here. So I needed to stack one more on top of it so it didn't have an undercut. It's good. One more on this side. Yeah, I like it. Little wire wheeling. Watch your eyes, buddy. Go fatty. <laughs> and that includes our video today. Big old fatty well. Okay. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to Wally's Welding World. I'm the well professor. All I do is I weld pipe. If you're not burning, you're not earning, and then you're definitely not learning. Today we put the pool head on the pipe. I went over and showed you guys how to lay the, the pool head kind of out and put it on the pipe. It's real simple, it's real easy, but you gotta make sure it's strong so it can pull all that pipe. That's why we did the 7018 welds on that pool head. I really hope you guys liked it. If you do, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and share it with your friends across the world. Because if you liked it, they're gonna love it as well. Thank you for coming out. We'll talk to you guys later.